Um, the board, I want to give a special uh, thanks to Vicki and Elizabeth and Sterling and uh, Mark back here and Brad Grayson and Alicia. Seriously, they've done a hell of a job. They got us on uh, TV a couple times. We've got some good coverage for you about the lawsuit and what's happening. Your story is being heard because of what they're doing behind the scenes. Um, I want to really give a thanks for the three plaintiffs who stuck their neck out because a lot of landlords didn't want to be on the dotted line uh, with their name in a federal lawsuit. And that took a lot of courage. And the people that did it, I really am appreciative for them. As one of our ladies is a member, little, little old lady who has got, she's 77 years old. She's got three little rentals on the west side and she depends on them for her in her for her retirement living and because of all of this she hadn't been able to you know collect any rent and uh right after we filed the lawsuit one of her biggest problems moved right out and uh so i'm really excited about that so the everybody's contributed in different ways the people who've thrown money into it really appreciate that um it's a so it's just kind of a huge group effort of resources and um if you ever see alicia in here normally she's here every week but alicia gathered so many data points of lawsuits around the country it helped us tremendously because this lawsuit has nothing like it's ever been filed i mean we're just like grasping at how do we even write this thing what do we even say how do we pull it together and um, without Alicia helping guide us through different lawsuits that were going on, we got to pick and choose from different areas. So it's a huge team effort to get where we are. And um, everybody's asked me, how do you know the lawsuit had the effect of getting the governor to restrict the eviction ban just to the 14th and then walk away from it? Well, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to show you the proof here and explain it to you. We filed our lawsuit. This is the governor's task force on landlord tenants. And he gave a re this report is dated July 29th. July 29th is the date that the governor went on his weekly press release, which is a Wednesday, and said, um, we're going to only roll back evictions just to the 14th of August instead of the normal 30-day extension. And this report was dated July 29th, prepared for those comments. But as you'll see in the underneath, it says revised July 31, updating for state eviction timeline. That means that the day after we filed this lawsuit, the governor had to revise this report in order to accommodate the new eviction uh, rollback. So it's all because of what you guys have done and we're very happy about it. The lawsuit is still technically kind of going forward and we've got some things to do, but the main goal of getting the eviction ban overturned, give yourselves a hand, it's huge, yeah. huge, huge. So uh, I'm gonna tell you just two seconds if I can, what's in this report, Vicki has got a copy of it, you're gonna post it to Syria, right? And it's got all these things in it. Basically, the governor wants landlords and tenants to work together as best they can. Um, there's going to be some pre-litigation pre or during litigation mediated uh, settlement conferences. One county is going to be the, the pilot county for that, and all the information's in here. Also, there's going to be, I'm sure, uh, new reporting requirements, like if you've got a, a repayment plan, you're going to have to file it with the court, and they've got... Hello? For during the mm -hmm. They've also got um, Where's the other mic? A status certification because Indiana's got one. Indiana's got Indiana's got one. Ah! Are you there? Yeah, Indiana's got one set of rules. The federal government has another set. And so you have to certify that your property is not under the federal guidelines. So this is a report you're gonna, I'm sure in your eviction cases, in every county, you're gonna have a report like this that certifies kind of like you did your damages, right? Here's an affidavit of damages. Here's an affidavit that my property isn't included in one of those federal programs. So you're, look for more paperwork and some more uh, settlement guidelines. If you're familiar with foreclosures after the 2008 uh, uh, financial crisis, the government instituted a settlement process. You're not forced to settle. 
but you have to kind of go through this next step of saying, hey, is there any way to work out a deal? If there is, great. If there's not, move the case forward. But I think it's going to end up something like that, and that's the pilot program in here. So number one, everybody contributed fantastically. We've got a fantastic result, and uh, I just really appreciate everything that's been going on. So thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, Jeff, for uh, that great information. And uh, I mean, honestly, if it wasn't for Jeff, a lot of this I don't think would be moving forward. And, and honestly, the great leadership of Elizabeth Sickles at uh, Indiana State, Rhea, clap it up for Elizabeth as well. Uh, her leadership has been impeccable. Um, you know, I, I was looking because I thought this, you, you talked about Alicia. She sent this out, and we, I always preach it, but sometimes numbers behind the preaching uh, resonates with people. And, and one of the things she sent out was, and we always say, man, we're just small-time landlords just, just trying to make a living. And it was 39 cents of every dollar in rent goes to pay the property manager. 27 cents of every dollar covers payroll, supporting, pay, like all those supporting things. 14 cents of every dollar uh, in the rents goes to property taxes and 58 billion in, in property taxes. Only nine cents to every dollar is returned to the investor or the landlord. So as many times people are talking in this narrative and they think of landlords as these greedy people, we're talking about nine cents on every dollar, right? Not, not 39 uh, cents on every dollar, which uh, I know a good property manager can do it for 38 uh, <laughs> on every dollar. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, that, that's what's important, to have people on our side and support them. Not only support them with your words, but support them with your money and your revenue. We need your revenue so we can continuously fight this. This is only the first battle of many. This is honestly not the first battle, but there's one of many battles. Um, so it's very important that you not only support them um, right now, but continuously support them on a monthly, weekly con uh, contribution if you can. All right? <clears throat>